The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks. Uh, looking good, Billy Ray? Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start out the show looking at the German DAX, as you can see, uh, over the last couple of days here. Since uh, the 31st of July, we've completed a small ABC uh, move to the upside. Uh, so far, it's been 382 of the high that we made uh, way back on July the 18th in the DAX, but it's still a little bit early. We did have a very nice three-drive pattern, uh, as you can see, that uh, formed right at the bottom. It retested it one more time, almost a perfect double bottom, and then we had uh, another rally. So it's still in a downtrend, but it's uh, trying to, uh, you know, turn up. The question is, is it going to be able to turn up? That's the $64 question. Now, if we take a look at the daily, We'll see the same thing, but it looks a little bit more bearish when you look at it on the daily basis. And the reason for that is, is that um, you can see the 382 rally clear. And if you notice the time that it's taken this 382 rally to complete has been eight trading days. That usually is a uh, bearish sign, but, you know, it's still early. Uh, but right now we're basically uh, slightly up on the day uh, in uh, Germany, but it's still very, very uh, very, very early. The German DAX moves in, is very, very volatile, folks. Uh, it moves in great patterns, but unless you've got uh, good risk parameters, uh, this is not a good thing for, especially not a good thing for the neophyte traders because it, it moves very, very quickly and could be very dangerous. Uh, the good part is that it does follow the patterns uh, extremely well, and so you want to keep an eye on that. Uh, regarding my comment yesterday about the market, I got more I got more negative emails than I've gotten in a long time yesterday about the stock market. Uh, the fact that I thought that this might be a major top in here, folks, it's just based on what I see. You know, uh, you know, I'm wrong a lot. I'm right. Or I'm light. I'm right some of the time. So uh, it, it's just the patterns that I'm seeing. You know, that's basically it. Uh, my good friend Rich Anderson. Um, who's lost 50 pounds, by the way. He's down to the same weight he was 41 years ago, which is uh, really terrific. Anyway, um, what he did was he told me there's going to be a, a big uh, article hitting the, the news uh, here on the Internet probably from um, One River Asset Management, uh, Eric Peters. He's one of the, the quants out of Wall Street. And he is saying that the VIX index is ready for something really spectacular getting ready to happen. Uh, what he's talking about here is the uh, long-term uh, volatility uh, in the market. I'll, I'll bring this chart up so you folks can take a look at it. Then I'll add a few things to it just to show you what I'm looking at because, you know, I don't understand all the things that he's talking about, but I do understand, you know, some of the patterns. But what he's saying is the reason why this VIX is down is, is many fold. Uh, partly of which is quantitative easing, you know, the fact that we have zero interest rates. Uh, not only that, we've had a rising stock market for the last seven years and a whole bunch of other things that uh, are related to uh, volatility that have a double-edged sword. But um, that's neither here nor there. Well, all I'm going to do is to take that chart and I'm going to add a few patterns to it so you can see where we are. We've seen these the same way, but this is a little different way of looking at it because uh, if you'll take a, take a look at it here, you'll see, um, there you go. Uh, you'll notice you have, a, you have the three drive pattern at the top there uh, in January of 2015. And you can see we have a three drive pattern here in um, 2017. If you look very closely, at this volatility index chart, you'll notice uh, just looking at 2017, you can see the three drive pattern again. Now, this is related to the, the, the short positions of people that are not uh, commercials. These are the big guys. In other words, are the little guys that <laughs> these are the, little, the big guys. Non-commercials, folks, are small traders, and these are the smaller traders. So they have a large, you know, net short position. So whether that means anything or not. 
you know, we'll have to, you know, have to wait and see. But this article will be coming out. I don't know how much press it gets, but Eric Peters is, uh, he's one of the heavy hitters on Wall Street, so it'll probably get, you know, quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of press. So we'll see, you know, what happens uh, with this. But he was kind enough, you know, to send it, uh, send it on. We have one other chart that I want to send uh, from across the pond. If you'll give me a second here, I'll bring this up so we can take a look at it. This is the FTSE chart. Um, where are we right here? Here we go. Hold on one second. And you'll, um, all righty. Okay. There we go. You can see this is the FTSE chart, um, daily chart going back um, from 2016. You can see that beautiful three drive to a top pattern there in the three circles. Uh, we broke down. We stopped at the 50% retracement level. There just happened to be a Gartley. And that we've done now is we've completed a Gartley to the upside right here as we were trading today at 75.31 uh, in the DAX. So this is a this is the FTSE, folks. I'm sorry. That is the, the London stock market. The DAX is the German stock market. But uh, this is also a Gartley pattern. Um, someone's asked a question, is this a head and shoulders pattern? No, it is not because there's no symmetry of there, neither time nor price. So in my opinion, that cannot be a head and shoulders pattern. So that's pretty much what we're looking at here. Uh, another, another chart that looks very, very interesting here um, today and, and yesterday from what happened is if you'll give me one second, I will get it up here so that we can take a look at it. And here it comes. This is uh, the PhD of the market. This is Dr. Copper. And we're going to put it up here and take a look at it. And as you can see here, We've been up to this one, two, seven, three times now over the past three weeks. Uh, we made a higher high yesterday by uh, a about penny, one penny at uh, 293, uh, and then we sold off last night to 289. We're trading around 291 right now. So as long as uh, this market stays above 284 in the copper, uh, it's uh, very, very bullish. But it, should we? Uh, go below that, this would be a very, very in a negative uh, pattern, in my opinion, because uh, the fact that it hit that one, two, seven, three times and then couldn't go any higher, that would be uh, that would be another thing that would make uh, I make my position in copper uh, bearish. That's what I would be watching. So this is one of the things that we're another one that we're watching today that I think is is very important. At the break, we're going to have Ed Carlson of the Seattle Technical Advisors from Gary. Guess where he's from, folks. He's from Seattle, and he's going to be talking to us um, about the work of George Lindsay. Uh, he's done some great work with Lindsay's uh, timing stuff, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And he's been on before and gave us some good information. So we're having Ed back uh, today. So that'll be that'll be very interesting, and that'll be at the break. Um, Tomorrow I will not be on the show, folks. Uh, I will be traveling. The um, I'll be back on Thursday and Friday. Thursday, my guest will be Bill Meridian of Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. And on Friday, our good friend Shane Smolian from WolfTrader.net will both be, uh, is it? That's correct. Yes. <clears throat> Yes, I, I believe the copper is a sale. When it made a new high yesterday by almost nothing and couldn't go any higher, I thought that was a, I thought that was a sale in copper, and the stop would be 293, 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to take a look at the uh, chart of the uh, IWM, which is the Russell uh, 2000. You can see it's uh, having a, a rally uh, from last Thursday. Uh, it hasn't rallied very much, that's for sure. And if this is all we get in this rally, uh, this is going to be pretty negative to the downside. This is a big divergence from what we see, of course, uh, in the NASDAQ and especially in the Dow Jones with the Dow you know, being the leader, and uh, that's been the big thing in the news. So we'll watch. I think yef yesterday the Dow was up 10 days in a row. I think that's only done that five times in the history of the Dow. Uh, could have done it more, but that's what my work says. So we'll see how that works out. And I wanted to share uh, one of the charts um, from my good friend Jim Bartolioni that we'd been talking about, and this is the um, reverse uh, index chart for the VIX. In other words, if you want to be uh, bully or bearish on volatility, this is what you would be buying. And as you can see, this has been a uh, really big move here uh, over the past, uh, you know, six or seven years. And uh, we've we've hit some perfect ABCD numbers up in this area. So it's a very important uh, one to uh, look at. So um, this is also similar to the chart that I posted earlier this morning that came from Eric Peters, but it's just a pattern, folks. You know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but it's got everything, you know, lined up, uh, you know, pretty nicely. You know, one of the one of the, the the disadvantages is that I have here is this radio show because I have such a great deal of fondness and respect for the O'Briens, and uh, one of the things that I don't want to do is to get extremely uh, – um, bearish on one side or bullish on one side and cause some problems, you know, to the uh, people at the con at the uh, at th that listen to us. And that's why we, you know, whenever we put a recommendation out, we always say this is where we're wrong and get out because there's nothing wrong with being wrong. The, 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 the bad part is if you stay wrong. And that's the that's basically the difference between a new trader and another trader. So uh, and, and the old trader, the old trader will get out right away and move around. One of the one of the good rules that you can use is use a three-day rule. If you've been in something for three days and it's not working, you're most probably wrong. 
And uh, at that point, your risk is most probably going to be as small as you can. So when we come in here tomorrow and this market's still going up, I'm going to have to say it might go up forever. This might be the time that Isaac Newton is wrong. But uh, we'll wait and see how that happens. So just remember, when you put these on, we give you the ideas and the trades, but it's your responsibility you know, to put the orders in and see what's happening. If you remember back in January, uh, I know it was February, February, we had a really nice three drive pattern in the VIX index, and we bought some call options, and uh, they were really cheap. I mean, they were about a hundred bucks, but you know they they expired worthless. But you know that some of them that you buy, they they work pretty good. What's frustrating is the fact that you know I wanted to be buying beans, meal, oil, and corn, and every uh, uh, soybean oil and everything yesterday, and everything gapped up, so I didn't get filled. They left me at the gate. So what my plan is, is to buy the first retracement that we get here in the beans and the wheat and the corn. And we will get one because this is a weather-related market. And as soon as the weather, you know, clears up or gets a little too chilly, the market, or a little too uh, warm, uh, it'll back off. So we'll see uh, what is going to, to be happening. So that's, uh, that's uh, what we're looking at here uh, early this morning. I still think that this chart that I'm uh, posting right now is one of the most important charts that we've seen in many many months and this is the the volatility index as it rates to as it relates to the Dow Jones Industrial Average as you can see from the time of July the 8th uh, the Dow has been in a basically uh, it's been in a certainly been in a runaway move since the 25th of July we have not had a down day uh, since that time and yet look at the VIX index how it's been acting uh, this is this is not bearish action in my opinion folks because uh, if the market will not go down uh, you know when it should be uh, going down that usually means it wants to go up because if it's shaking off uh, bad news which going up for the uh, in the Dow Jones is bad news for the VIX, that usually means it only has one way to go. So that's uh, neither here nor there, but uh, that that's just old, you know, technical trading talk. So keep keep an eye on that because that's uh, I think that's I think that's the the canary in the coal mine, as they say. I think that's the one that has a really good a chance of doing. We're also seeing some uh, really big divergence here uh, in the Dow Jones transportations. If we take a look at this Dow Jones transportations, you can see it looks almost exactly like the, um, at least recently, like we have in the Russell 2000. Those charts look exactly alike, and here we are into a four-door, uh, four-door, a four-day rally in the uh, Dow Jones transportations, and um, we'll we'll see how much it gets. If it gets up uh, another hundred points, it's going to be. Uh, right at a 382 retracement. Uh, right now, the market is a little bit weaker this morning, and I say a little bit with a tongue in cheek because it's not very weak at all. But we'll we'll watch it here these next few days. I still believe this full moon and lunar eclipse that we had yesterday is going to be something of major significance. However, the big one is going to be August 21st when we have the solar eclipse and the new moon. That'll be one that will be uh, really really important. Uh, and the other thing, of course is that the Bradley model is uh, setting right over this, uh, you know, what we believe could be a major high. And again, this is a probability, folks. This is not, uh, this is not a, uh, a certainty by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, it's been following very, very nicely since uh, July. Well, actually, it started uh, uh, about the middle of July, it's been following just about perfectly. But these last few days, this run-up in the Dow is an outlier event. You don't see this very often, but th that does not mean that it can't go up 16 days or 22 days. And uh, like we've seen 22 days in silver and sugar before, so that could be a very interesting uh, also. Um, we've had some questions about the um, – hold on one second. I wanted to get this uh, – uh, about the gold market. But before I get that, gold is having a very, very minor bounce today, folks. We're only $7 off of the bottom. That is not that is not really bullish action, in my opinion. Uh, gold and silver, to me, still look like they have, you know, some more uh, to go on the downside. Uh, we also have a question uh, uh, to discuss Bitcoin. I, <laughs> I'm reluctant to discuss it, but we will discuss it just because there's so much in people involved with Bitcoin. You're seeing that it's acting beautifully technical. If you can see the, the bottom here on, uh, on July the 14th, 
you, that was a perfect A, B, C, D correction right at the 61% retracement of March 23rd. I mean, that was spot on. We talked about it here on the show. I mean, we don't trade that stuff, but it was doing perfectly. We rallied up. We backed off one more time to a 50% retracement. And what we've done now is we've completed a perfect A, B, C, D butterfly up at the top. So we'll follow Bitcoin here over these next few days. We could easily make a 1.618 on this because of the fact that we had this huge move where Bitcoin moved uh, over 300 points just the other day. That was last Wednesday. So we'll follow this. But somewhere between this level of 3434, where it's trading now, and up at the 1.618, which would be just, low, just above 3600, that should be very, very interesting. Uh, crude oil is uh, basically, and we just completed last night a beautiful ABCD pattern on the hourly charts, came in at 49.70. Uh, that was at the 61% retracement of the high uh, back then, so we'll watch it. 877, stay tuned for Ed Carlson of Seattle Technical Advisors. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we have Ed Carlson of the Seattle Technical Advisors.com. Ed, are you there? Good morning, Larry. Good morning to you. How is the weather up there in Seattle? You still have a hundred degree temperature? Uh, no, we're we're about the low nineties these days. 
Wow, that's still pretty hot for you folks, isn't it? It's a little toasty when you don't have any air conditioning, yeah. Uh, you know, oh, my goodness. Okay, listen, um, I've posted your first chart, which shows the uh, the long-term view here with this 186-day cycle. Do you want to start with that one? Actually, uh, I was hoping to get to that second. Do you have the 15-year uh, interval chart? I believe I do. Hold on just a second. I think this is the... This That's the ugly one. Lots of red and blue lines on it. Oh, no, that, that makes it easy. Sure, I've got that. Hold on to put this up. Then I wanted to... I, we have a question here from... Um, one of our uh, listeners, and also Arch oh, wow. Crawford wanted to say hello because he actually knew oh. Mr. Uh, uh, Lindsay. Go. So go, go ahead, fire away. This is your S&P 500 index going back quite a ways, I guess. Uh, I, I, no, that's not the right chart. Uh-oh. Uh, well, you said one. red, so I <laughs> saw reds. <laughs> All right, give well, me one other red chance. And, red and blue. Ah, now I've got it. I've got the one you want here, right here. I put them. I put them all in sequence, but I evidently my sequence yeah, is not the way it should be. I but, apologize uh, for that. I, no, no, no. Uh, that's okay. Here we go. All right. Um, well, the th there we go. The thing to know about Lindsay is he had a uh, kind of a holistic approach to the markets, all of which he came up with, and he had several models. And what he would do is he would start with. A, what he called the long-term intervals, uh, and that's what we're looking at here, uh, to find a place to start, you know, as far as picking tops or bottoms. Now, what he would do is he would find a significant low, and um, I don't think we want to take the time to go into that today, but, you know, it doesn't take a, a computer to look at a chart and know what a significant low is for most of us, I think. And he would then count an interval forward in time of 15 years to 15 years and 11 months. And within that 11-month interval, uh, that forecast, he would ex expect to find a tradable high. Well, if you look back at uh, 2001, it was not, of course, the low of the bear market, but it was a sharp sell-off there. And uh, that's where we're, we're, we're drawing a line, a uh, vertical line, and then a horizontal line, which encapsulates the current time period over here on the right. You see, hopefully you can see a question mark above there. Well, that, that points to an interval, let's see, it would have been September of last year through August of this year. So we're just about to the end of the interval. And uh, for that reason alone, we would think we would be getting close to uh, something approximating a, a tradable top. Um, then, now we can go to the first chart you put up, Larry. Okay. Uh, uh, Lindsay had another, he, well, he had several approaches to this. Uh, the next thing Lindsay would have done is he would have pulled out his basic advances and declines, which are associated with what he called the standard time spans. Well, we don't have that to work with here. We, and for that reason, I, I, when I say we don't have that, I mean we're, we're coming up too short for this to be a, a, the final high of the bull market. Uh, and again, you know, we, we could spend a lot of time talking about these things. But the point is, uh, Without that information, we have to rely on some other tools. But it, what it tells us is we're not a, we don't believe we're at the final high of the bull market. We just think we're at a significant high within the bull market. Okay. Well, so then we have to look at some other Lindsay's other tools, and one of one of uh, the simplest is his low low high uh, interval, and that's what we're looking at here. We we can see uh, significant lows on uh, what were those dates. Um, you might be able to read them better than I can at this point. Is fe it was February of 2016. February yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, February 11, 2016. And then another uh, big low was on November 4th of 16. And the distance between those two dates was 186 days. If we didn't mm -hmm. count forward 186 days from November, uh, we, we have a target uh, top of uh, for last Thursday, I believe, August 3rd. Mm -hmm. Now, these, these low, low, high intervals, they seem too simple to be true. And frankly, in, <laughs> they are in that you don't want to mm -hmm. use them by themselves. It's kind of like mm -hmm. uh, those who know, uh, a lot of people are acquainted with the three peaks and dome house pattern. But it's not mm -hmm. something you want to use by yourself or you're going to get in trouble. You, you, mm -hmm. Lindsay never meant for these, these models to be used by themselves in isolation. He meant for them to all be used together to confirm one another. And that's why I'm, I'm showing this, this uh, 186 degree, a day interval is because it confirms other things that we're looking at, both Lindsay mm -hmm. and non-Lindsay. 
Um, let's see here. What's what's the next in, uh, chart? You we have a, I have a question uh, from one of our listeners. Did you uh, know Jerry Factor out of uh, Ohio? Uh, Jerry did a lot of Lindsay work uh, many years. Of course, he died very young. He died of a heart attack trading at his desk. Uh, oh, probably twenty. It was about twenty years ago. He was only, I think, he was thirty-five or thirty-seven. Did you know him at all? Oh, that's right. No, I did not yeah. know him uh, when I was. His writing. wife's his wife's name was Lindsay. <laughs> Well, when yeah. I was writing the first book on Lindsay, I actually tried to track her down. I, I mm -hmm. think that he had passed away, but yeah. uh, I was unable to find her. Uh, mm -hmm. If anybody knows of her contact information, I'd love to get it. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, it was, I think he was 37 is when he passed away. I used to talk to him all the time, of course. I, folks uh, that don't know Lindsay, but back in the days of Louis Rukeyser, uh, Lindsay was a regular guest there, and he uh, really did a good job. I mean, he was requested quite a few times, so he did a lot of great, uh, a lot of great work in the market for sure. Okay, do you want to do this last chart that we have here? Sure. Okay, let's get this up, and we'll be uh, ready to go. This uh, last chart is actually the work of uh, Jesse Felder, uh, who uh, I've never met but communicated with by email several times, and follow him on Twitter. This, this red, well, the top line, of course, is the S&P 500, but that red line is the correlation between S&P and the VIX. And isn't it odd that, well, it's odd at all that it ever turns positive, but when it turns this positive, uh, you can see that we're looking at uh, a, a likely high, or a, a cor correction in the market. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to get as high as it's been, and it's certainly gotten higher, but I think we're in we're in danger territory here, and I just wanted to share something a little different. But Larry, as you've said uh, many times, you know there are a number of things going on that make us uh, a little leery about being along the market here. Uh, mm -hmm. The decennial pattern uh, warns mm -hmm. nasty sell-off in equities during years ending mm -hmm. the number seven, like 2017. Uh, mm -hmm. you look at the uh, you look at the uh, market going back to 1907, and every one of those years, with the with the exception of 1946 which suffered just a 6% drop. Every one of those other years has seen a double-digit decline beginning somewhere be between June and October. And as mm -hmm. I'm sure your listeners are aware, uh, August and September seasonally are the worst two months of the year. So, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have to even have Mr. Lindsay on board to, uh, to be looking for some kind of pullback here. Mm -hmm. um, what, how many in Hindenburg omens have we had in the last month? And over the past six mm -hmm. months, uh, have there been mm -hmm. nine? Uh, um, and like you like to say, the, the Bradley model is pointing to an inflection point sometime in August. Uh, yeah, much yeah, the that makes me concerned. The other thing is, is that the people are starting to throw vegetables at technicians, so that's usually a sign that there must be something getting ready to happen. That's for sure. But uh, you know, it's not easy <laughs> to to look at some of these markets. That's absolutely for sure. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, Ed, and we really appreciate it, my friend. We'll have you on again soon. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ed Carlson, Seattle Technical Advisors. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. We broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got John from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. John, are you there? Hello, Larry. Um Thanks for all you do. Wanted to say good morning and ask you a couple of questions, if you could. If I've got the answers, I'll try. Fire away, my friend. Excellent. Uh, before I um, chat with you about the grain markets, can you share with me uh, parameters on the S&P futures, uh, the ESU-7 contract? We're 2473. We're not moving for 14 days straight, hanging at highs. Is there a price lower that would suggest to you if we get below uh, that uh, a downtrend is likely to get established and a top form? I believe 24.57 would be that number, John, and the reason why that's the lowest we've been in the last eight days. Uh, in fact, we've never seen this in the E-mini before. Uh, it started trading in um, April of 2016, and we've never had this many days in a row where it's closed within, I think, two points. Now, the Dow Jones, I posted the chart of the two of them together, but the Dow Jones has gone basically parabolic due to Boeing Airlines and um, a couple others, uh, Apple and uh, I believe McDonald's. Uh, but th these are stocks that are, you know, weighted in the Dow, so they push the Dow up a lot, lot more. But the S&P being a cap weighted, you know, that's not the same thing. We've seen this in the in the advanced decline line, uh, excuse me, in the new highs to new lows that we've shown several times here where new highs to new lows are not confirming this is a big breakout. So the number that you're asking about is 2457 uh, in the um, S&P. Now, the fact that we've had such little volatility is is really quite amazing. It, it is amazing, and yes, thanks for sharing that. So that uh, 2457, that's merely the low price that occurred back there on the uh, 27th of July, I think. That's correct, yes. Right. Very good. Thanks for that. Um, uh, switching over to the grain markets, um, thank you for sharing what you were attempting to do yesterday and, and this morning on, on the soybeans. Uh, Larry, I just wanted to share just something fundamentally that's uh, going on in those grain markets. Um, both, well, not both, all three, the wheat, the corn, and the soybeans all peaked that week of um, July 3rd or July 10th, and they all made lower <laughs> lows last week, uh, the week, of course, of July 31st. And... Um, I, I am speculating that higher bottoms are forming in each one of those myself, so that's my, that's my bias. Um, and we all can see what the patterns are. But uh, I share with you and your listeners this, that from 2012 through 2016, globally, 
grain crops were improving and supplies built and got bigger and bigger and bigger with actually record crops, record inventories last year, 2016. That is shifting. Um, It shifted dramatically, of course, in that Minneapolis wheat, the hard red spring wheat crop. But it's also shifting in, in the other crops as well, which suggests to me there's a decent chance that bear market bottoms occurred last year, and I'm talking major league bear markets Mm -hmm. in 2016, and that as we proceed forward, you know, uh, bull markets of of, uh, some duration and some size will likely occur, and the way to trade it is the idea of looking for intermediate-term declines if they're forming higher lows to be buyers into those. So um, that, uh, that is what is going on and um, uh, would be my tactics going the next couple of weeks, especially for, well, actually for all three beans, corn, and wheat. And you shared with us your soybean tactics. Is there anything else that you could share with us on either wheat or corn? Well, actually, you know, we had the the full moon and lunar eclipse yesterday. The market moved pretty good. Now, what I'm looking for is to see if we can get a pullback. We're having a pullback in wheat uh, right now. You know, we bottomed at uh, 481, and we've rallied up to uh, 495. We're backing off now. We've already backed off about eight cents. So I'm wanting to see if we hold this 480 level. Uh, in the D suite, that's one that's interesting to me, and I'd like to see, you know, D corn down uh, around the 379 level. That's an area that I'm looking at because I believe the cycle is in play now, and all we have to do is be patient and try to, uh, you know, find a good entry point. So I'm trying, you know, I don't buy strength very well. That's the understatement of the year. So I'm trying to buy on a pullback here just to see if we get enough of a, of a place where we don't have to risk very much. That's really what I'm watching. Okay, very good. Larry, uh, thanks so much. Uh, Always appreciate everything you do. John, you're really great, and we appreciate all the work you do for TFNN, too, because you post some fabulous trades in there, and we really do appreciate it, and I'm I'm sure you already know that. So thanks again for doing all what you do, okay? I'm voting for ESU 7 under 2457. (laughs) Okay, thanks a lot, John. Yeah, that was Mr. Z, you bet. That was Mr. Z from Philly. He's always uh, giving some great information here at TFNN. So, and if you're a member of the TFNN, then you already know who he is because he really alerts us to some really great uh, places to uh, enter the markets. And uh, his percentage of wins versus losses is very, very high. Okay, folks. So let's take a, a little talk about the bond market here. Uh, we had that top at 55.03. Uh, a couple of days ago, we had the huge break, and all we've been able to do is rally back to a 50% retracement at that 54.16 level. We're trading at 54.07 right now, so that's a very, very um, you know small rally, but at least it is rallying. So uh, I believe that the interest rates uh, are going to be going higher from here, not lower. And um, unless we take out the 155 level on a closing basis in September bonds, I have to stick with the fact that we're looking at a possibility of the market, uh, you know, going higher, which means interest rates, uh, interest rates going higher means bonds and notes uh, will be going lower. So those are some of the things that we're, we're keeping a close eye on, you know, for today. So those are the main ones that we're watching. So um, remember that. Price 155 in the September bonds. If we close above there, my analysis of the Treasury bond and Treasury note market would be wrong, and and that's uh, that's what you have to realize what we're looking at. Uh, another question about the gold market, folks. We've only been able to rally uh, seven dollars off eight dollars. Well, just about seven and a half dollars off the bottom of the gold market in a in a rally that started on August the fourth, folks. That's that's the definition of a dead cat bounce. That is really, really a very, very shallow rally. We can see uh, this in in several other markets. We're seeing the same thing in the euro market after the high was made at the uh, one. 
uh, 119.10 level, we broke down to 117.10, uh, and then we've only been only been able to rally back to not even a 50% retracement of this move. So that's another one that's having, you know, a dead cat bounce. A lot of times after these really volatile days, the market will go flat for a couple of days. That's basically people being shell-shocked or trying to regroup, both the people that have won and the people that have lost. So keep that in mind. 877-927-6648. <clears throat> I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Basil Chapman will be giving a two-series webinar Wednesday, August 2nd, and Wednesday, August 16th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Can sector rotation buoy the market into 2018? Each time the market feels it's ready to have a sharp decline, formerly weak sectors rally to hold the market up. This two-webinar series will be free for Basil's opening call subscribers, and non-subscribers will also receive his daily newsletter for one month free as a trial subscription. Sign up for a 30-day free trial to Basil's daily newsletter, The Opening Call, and gain access to his subscriber-only webinar on August 2nd and Wednesday, August 16th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Can sector rotation buoy the market into 2018? Hi, everyone. This is Basil Chapman, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at my webinar series. To sign up for a 30-day free trial to Basil's daily newsletter and gain access to Basil's webinar, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I've uh, had a request to take a look at the euro versus the U.S. dollar. This is the most actively traded thing in, on the planet. There's nothing that trades any more than this, uh, well over a trillion dollars a day. Um, this is the shorter-term version. As you can see, the high we made back at that 119 level uh, was very, very important. We've broken down. We're trading at about the 118.08 level. But what we really need to do when we're watching this euro is to look at the chart of the uh, longer-term chart, which is the weekly. And the reason why I go to a weekly now is to show you the importance of what happened uh, on Friday, the fact that it made a perfect 1.618 expansion from the um, election night 
a high. And uh, so that's a very, very important level to look at. You'll also see that it made a perfect 1.27 expansion of the high from 2016. Both of those were spot on. That was up 15 handles uh, from the bottom in December. So this is why it's so important. Now, if we get above this 119.20 level, uh, that's going to be extremely bullish you know, to the euro. But I don't expect that to happen for a while. I believe we're going to come back and test that downtrend line that comes in around the 114 level. That'll be very, very important because that'll be a 20-man line. And it'll also be a 382 retracement of the uh, euro over the period of 2017. So that's why we're, we're watching it so very, very closely. Now, uh, the things that factor the euro, uh, you know, they're factored by everything because that's the currency of the European Union. But there, there's just so many things in there, and it's traded by uh, every major country in the world. Uh, and, and you know, when they when they buy something or sell something, they hedge it off uh, either through the euro or the U.S. dollar. And that's why that cross rate is so big, and uh, that's why it's so beautiful to trade too, because. It has such wonderful patterns, and it gives you really good risk control, and that's uh, you know the bottom line of what you're trying to see. 877-927-6648. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.